Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life. Now, here comes another awesome guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life. Pause up, pet pals. Welcome to Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life show. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, there are many, many words that can describe my special guest. My favorite? Catify. Catify. Now, are you as curious as, say, maybe a cat? That's great. I want you all to give pause and applause to the founder of House Panther and a two-time New York Times bestselling author, my friend, Kate Benjamin. Welcome to the show, Kate. Thank you for having me. I'm always excited to talk to you. All right. Hey, everyone. This is a person who studied design at the very prestigious Cornell University. And she has beautifully found a way to combine her passions, design and cats. And House Panther, let's spell it right, Kate. How do we spell it? It is spelled with the German spelling of house, so H-A-U-S, oh, yeah, oh. Panther, which is a little bit of a shout out to the Bauhaus, kind of the birthplace of modern design. Oh, well, I just learned something new, and the show's only been a minute in. So we can all go to H-A-U-S-Panther.com after the show, correct? Yes, please. All right, yes, please, with a little <laughs> bit of catnip on sprinkle on top. Um, you're celebrating almost a decade, right? Didn't you launch this in 2013? Well, I uh, actually yeah, I believe yeah. I changed the name to House Panther in 2012, but I started writing about cats and design in 2007. Wow. Yes. So um, I just had a little rebrand in 2012. So yes, so 10 year anniversary as House Panther, but I've been doing it for much longer than that. Um, ever since I've had cats of my own as an adult, I really started, started going down this path. <laughs> that's a good path to go down. It's always nice to talk to someone that's sort of a pioneer breaking the boundaries. And people are like, uh, cats, design, I'm just trying to hide the litter box when company comes. Explain why we have come a long way, Kitty. Exactly. Um, so my whole world really revolves around showing people that you can live with cats in your home and not lose your sense of style, right? So we don't have to give in to the crazy cat lady stereotype. Um, and, and yes, you know, not everybody is a cat person, but we have more and more people who are interested in, in involving them in their homes, in their families. They're really valued, valued family members. And cats are starting to, well, have been for a while now, coming up in the ranks with yes. dogs, right? So. Right. I credit the millennials. The millennials are digging cats, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. And and everybody, it's really, I mean, it's just, it, there's such a diverse group of cat lovers. And the thing is, a lot of people are really starting to pay more attention to what they need to have in the home in order to live their best lives. So that's really, it's not just about pretty things. It's about giving the cats what they need to really thrive, to, yeah. to live their best life and do it in a way that you can live with it. Because if you don't like how it looks, you're not going to do it. And then the cat won't have what they need. So who are your mentors? I mean, you're blazing a new trail. So are there some folks that, that sort of helped you in design that you and also your knowledge of cats that you, you brought them together? Yes, absolutely. So yes, those are the two worlds that I'm kind of combining, right? So we have right. the design world and we have the cat behavior world. So of course, the ultimate cat behavior uh, behaviorist that I've worked with is Jackson Galaxy. Um, so we co-authored our two books, Catification and Catify to Satisfy, um, which were kind Let's of- Let's say those names again, because holidays are coming. Great books to get. Go ahead. Excellent. Catification is the first book, which covers all the basic concepts. And then Catify to Satisfy was our follow-up, which is kind of like the advanced level. It goes deeper into some of the most important topics. And Jackson um, Galaxy, for the three people out there, is very well known. And he is, has been hosting uh, My Cat from Hell on Animal Planet. Good guy, good guy. I remember when he was renting a place in Redondo Beach. And it was a little place, and he was delaying the call from the, the landlord. He doesn't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> yeah. So we, yeah, we met early on when his show was just launching and um, he kind of, he was, uh, he was following my blog. And so he kind of tracked me down and said, Hey, we need to work together because he would go into people's homes and tell them what they need to do, but he's, he couldn't tell them how to do it in a way that they would like and that they would actually do it. So you're like peanut butter, butter and time. jelly. Yeah. You guys are it, peanut butter a, and jelly. A great combo. And so he said, well, we need to bring in the design side so people will do these things. And so that's what the books are. They take his behavior expertise and my design expertise and they put them together. So I'm, I'm not trained as a behaviorist. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm a designer who has a lot of cats. So, and you're living in Arizona, right? Yes. So my right. husband and I live here in, in central Phoenix in Arizona. And this is our condo where we have 13 cats. <laughs> I like this. And for all you lucky enough to subscribe to Arden Moore on YouTube, you're getting to see Kate right now. And there's this beautiful geometric design wall because I think cats like vertical. Yes. Oh, yes. And we can talk about all of the things that they like. This wall actually has several things integrated into it all in one, um, which is one of my favorite things. Like if you can get multifunctions in one thing or one area, you get extra points. So for the folks listening on all our great radio stations, kind of describe this wall because it almost looks like a rock climbing wall with flair. So this wall was created in partnership with MyZoo. So that's the company who made all of the pieces that are on the wall. And what it is, is just a small section. It's just about three feet wide in my office. Wow. Um, and it, all the way up to the ceiling, I've added little step shelves and these he hexagonal climbing hideaways so they serve as perches but then cats can also go inside them which gives them a sense of comfort to be in a semi-enclosed space i love um, this and then they climb all the way up you can you just the way you position things is very important to give cats easy access up and down um and i've added uh carpet pieces on all of the top surfaces so that they don't slip and fall and if they go all the way up there's a scratcher a vertical sizal wrap scratcher. And then that clear plastic thing is kind of like a little space age dome. <laughs> it's got, it's re really fun. So they go up in there sometimes and they can hang out and they can see. So you, in this wall, you have climbing. So vertical space, Good. you have um, hiding, which is a very important thing for them for resting and hiding. And you have scratching. Plus it also just gives them sort of a play place. Um, and then one of the other important things is feeding. So there's, you can't see her, but Lily is in one of those little <laughs> hexagon hideaways right now because she kind of lives there. And so she's a little more of a timid cat um, than everybody else. So sometimes some of the other cats give her a hard time. So she gets her food up on this platform here I like that. so that she can eat in peace. And we don't want mealtime mayhem. Right, exactly. And I don't know about you, but if somebody's staring at me or I'm feeling a little pressure where I'm trying to eat my, my meal, my stomach's a turning and your litter box is going to have some stinky prizes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Same for cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't use a litter box, but I've seen that happen where cats get stressed. And I, I'm a big proponent of mealtime, peace, namaste, whatever, and elevated. So in my house with the cats and the dogs, my kitties are uh, elevated, not looking at each other. And the dogs are, are you know, on the floor and it and everybody eats in peace and yep. harmony so but important. the nice thing i love about the many things you do kate is that it is fashion and function that is the combo that we are going for absolutely so and it also can be any style like this our our home is fairly minimal modern lots of white um uh, i have some ikea shelves over here too these actually run all the way around the office and over the, the monitor here across my desk um, so that when I'm sitting at my desk, I can have cats nearby, <laughs> but not on the keyboard. And so, all right, well, yeah. we're going to talk, we're going to talk more with Kate Benjamin. She's the genius of House Panther, a best-selling New York Times uh, author after we take this break. So sit, purr, get your feline design on. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Four Legged Life Show. I'm your host, Arden Moore. We are in for a big treat because our special guest is the acclaimed Kate Benjamin of House Panther. And you guys know the books, Catification, 
Catify to Satisfy, that she co-authored with Jackson Galaxy. I mean, isn't it kind of cool to create a, a new word and what a new word in the dictionary? Absolutely. And it was just, it was such an important thing that needed to be created. So back in the day when Jackson and I first started doing this, you know, there, there wasn't as much social media, but there was nothing out there. So that's why we made the books. And now if you search hashtag catification, there are just endless amounts of inspiration and ideas from people from all over the world. So it's really exciting to see people sharing that. And, and I'm glad it's a nice term that you guys yeah. created. Well, yeah. What would you say, Dr. Webster, what would be your definition of catification? So it's kind of the art and science of creating a home environment where both you and your cat have everything that they need um, in a way that is aesthetically pleasing. So it, it takes into, into account both the behavior and the design piece. And catify, how would you describe that? Well, that would be the verb. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if it's going to show up on Wordle one day, because it is, what, Ooh. catify? Is that it right? Is it right? C-A-T-I, oh, wow. Oh, we, we're, we're one what? letter too long. Dang it, you, you could have been on Wordle. Have you ever been in a crossword puzzle? Have you seen that term? I haven't, but I wonder if it has. That, yeah. That's a good question. I think. Hey, I listeners, know. have you seen Catify in a crossword puzzle? Let us know. <laughs> but I, I, and all of all that aside, more and more cats are living indoors, and they're safer because of that. But there's a risk that they can go stir crazy, just like many of us, you know, experienced during the wonderful lockdown during COVID. So put yourself as a cat right now, Kate Benjamin, and tell us um, what would you be able to tell some people why going vertical and some of these simple things that don't break the bank could really blossom a cat? Absolutely. Creating vertical space essentially doubles the area that your cat could be using. Excellent. Right? Yes. So that's one thing. It gives them extra spaces they can go. It gives them a way to be up high so they can see the entire environment. That's so important for cats because they're both predator and prey. So they need to kind of get a feel for what's going on, especially if there are other cats or dogs or small children in the environment. They, they need to be able to get up and away, see what's going on. Um, so creating vertical space is so important, especially if it's like in front of a window, giving them sort of a oh. destination to go and look out, something like that. That's a great way to do it. So humbly, I'm in a 200 square foot tiny house right now called Ard's Den. And I'm wondering why all of this going to the cats, because I have a window perch. I have a, a hutch that has a, a cat a bed. I have a table with two beds and my dogs take over the couch but there's windows and there's sunlight. And I, I think, you know, I can do this radio show without them going, Row! right? <laughs> oh, well, you just here. woke up my cat that's over here. <laughs> <laughs> he but just I, lifted his head. <laughs> but you're, you're saying you don't break the bank. In fact, on your site, House Panther, don't you have a whole DIY section? You want to talk about that? Yep. DIY and the books are very heavy on DIY. So you don't have to go out and purchase things. Um, you can work with what you have. You can buy very inexpensive shelves and things just using basic materials from the home improvement store or okay. even things you find at a thrift store. Oh. So it's just a matter of being a little creative and figuring out how to adjust things so that they're cat friendly. So you might need to add a non-slip carpet on top. You might want to add a toy. You need to make sure it's very well mounted to the wall if you're talking about creating this yeah. cat super high Because when, when a 12 pound cat leaps up high, that's a thud. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. You have Because you have to think about that force when they're jumping on and off. So it's more than what the cat weighs. Um, okay. so what about materials that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, everybody's watching HGTV and DIY programs, things like that, but you got to make sure there's nothing that could hurt the cat, right? Correct. So safety is number one. Um, and then, you know, you want to make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing um, and that it functions well for the cat. So um, definitely non-toxic materials, adding those non-slip surfaces, um, especially looking at paints and finishes, anything that could come off when cats scratch it, making sure you're using safe paints, non-toxic, um, things like that. Really important. I know cats can see colors. They see them differently than us. Is there a color that cats really say, me, wow? So the, the 
literature that I've seen says that they can differentiate between purple, yellow, and green. Really? And those three are actually able to be seen. And then everything else is kind of in that gray spectrum where as though they were colorblind. Um, now, I don't, I don't know, but I've seen <laughs> quite a few studies that have said that. And I've also seen anecdotal evidence with people saying, my cat only plays with the green toy. Interesting. So, um, so I think there's something to that. I personally, when I'm designing cat toys or anything that needs to capture their attention, I like to use more contrasting values. So like light and dark, black and white, patterns, textures, things that might catch their eye if it's rolling across the floor. Um, anything that also is simulating prey when I'm designing toys. It's all about the hunter. I think they're hunting. Exactly. So do you have patents? What trademarks? What, what, what do you have? Um, I, uh, I, <laughs> I don't necessarily have any, uh, anything patented. I am always just kind of experimenting. Um, and I do have a line of cat furniture that is manufactured in partnership with Primetime Pets, um, based in Rockwall, Texas. Uh, that's near me. I'm in Dallas. Yes. Yeah, I know. That's right. I need to come see you next time. Yeah. Well, um, tell, <laughs> we got a couple minutes before we take a break. Can you tell us about your partnership with them? Because I think people would love to know more about that. Uh, yeah, so I've been working with them for years. Really fantastic company. Um, so I get to design perches and scratchers and toys. Um, we also have a line of freeze-dried raw um, cat treats that are made in the USA. Um, so just all really high quality stuff. And that's um, available at all sorts of different places online and different stores around the country. Wow. Do you sleep? <laughs> Well, yes, I have to. <laughs> I mean, do you wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh my gosh, I have another idea? I have lots of ideas. I get a lot of ideas like when I'm in the shower, when I'm walking or driving, you know, it's that whole like put you into your right brain kind of creative ideas. Lots of ideas, not enough time to get them all done. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's not a bad uh, fate. You have too many ideas and not enough time. It's better than the reverse. Don't you agree? Oh, I can't even imagine not having a hundred ideas that I want to work on. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're speaking with Kate Benjamin. I want you to check out her site, House Panther. It's H-A-U-S panther.com. Grab those books, Catification and Catify to Satisfy. Um, we're going to plunge in a little bit more about uh, her background and what's ahead and things like catios and what she's doing to help shelters after we take this break. So sit and purr. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life Show. Guess who I am? Yep, your host, Arden Moore. Um, I'm having a great time talking with Kate Benjamin of House Panther. Uh, I think we've been friends for about 10 years now, right? Oh, yes. I think I've, I've known you at least that long since the <laughs> long pause days. The early oh, months. my gosh. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Um, this is something important because, you know, life happens and I wanted you, if you would, uh, talk about the C word that doesn't start with cat. It isn't cats, it's cancer. And I'm so glad you're a two-time survivor. But let's plunge into a little bit about that and how taking on cancer is helping you keep going. Absolutely. So um, when I was just 42, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, just in a routine mammogram screening. Wow. So highly recommend that you uh, stay on top of those screenings so that you can deal with whatever might come your way. Okay. Um, and we did some fairly, uh, you know, non-aggressive. We just did a lumpectomy and radiation. But then a few years later, it came back with full force in both. So I had to do a bilateral mastectomy and chemo. So I've kind of done the whole range of things. And in, in addition to the traditional like uh, standard treatments, um, I was working with a naturopath and just really started um, dialing in diet and lifestyle. And I really feel, I mean, overall, it ended up being a fantastic experience that changed me significantly. And one of the things that I think really um, has kicked it in for me, because you know, once you're done with treatment, you cut things kind of go back to normal, you start eating a little bit unhealthy again, maybe not exercising as much doing all the things. Well, about a year, year and a half ago, um, I just decided, I'm going to start making raw food for the cats. And oh. I really delved into 
the nutrition that cats need to live their best life, right? Um, and I knew I had fed raw before, but I hadn't made it myself. And so now I entirely make all the raw food for my cats. And something about doing that just flipped a switch for me and my husband where I now make everything that we eat. And wow. A completely like just based on, you know, a whole food plant-based diet, which I personally have done a lot of research and I believe is the very best, healthiest thing that everybody can eat. Um, especially if you are trying to not get cancer again or avoid it. Yes. Yes. Um, you don't so, want yeah. to have the anti-inflammatory actions and things like that. And, um, you know, plant-based is really expanding as we realize we only have one planet and we need to keep care of the finite that we have. Is that what led you to a, a create a, a site that's uh, called Feline So Fine? What's that? Yes. So that is the website that I created during my second round of cancer treatment as I was sort of unearthing all of these healthy resources. And a lot of people, I was very public about what was going on. I was posting on Facebook a lot and people were asking me questions about what I learned. So I decided to just put it all together in one website. And oh. that is now sort of morphing into the next new thing. And at the time it was just sort of what I was learning and cancer updates. And now I'm really focusing on uh, singing the praises of whole food plant-based living and raw food for cats. So basically just eating in a species appropriate way. So, so having that understanding that cats need to eat meat. Yes, please, please, and, please. Yes, good, so, good know, protein. Don't, don't yes. feed them a vegan diet. Um, and then <laughs> what, what, but what do we need? You know, it just, it just really changed everything about how I think about how do you stay healthy in a species appropriate way? <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, you are always evolving and, and that is really, really important. You also like to give back. Now, what's your work with some shelters that you've been doing lately? So in the last few years, I have really started focusing um, on catification in shelters. Yay. So, yeah. So Jackson and I have done several together, especially um, through uh, Greater Good Charities. We've done mm -hmm. several projects there with Rescue Rebuild. Greater Good um, is great. <laughs> fantastic. Really just wonderful. Um, and so uh, it took me down the road of actually uh, really deeply researching the, the literature, uh, the academic literature that's out there about cat behavior specifically in shelter environments. So all of the work that Kate Hurley has done at the UC Davis uh, Corret Shelter Medicine Program and all of her colleagues. Um, and so when you stepped into a shelter, give me an example. What, because you've got design and you know cats and Jackson knows behavior, what did you see and how are some things that you can do to improve cats in shelters that do have finite budgets. Yes, absolutely. So, so one of the big things, a lot of shelters that I walk into to start a project um, are doing a lot of the things correctly in terms of what the cats need, the sort of the baseline of what they need for just maintaining. And the shelter spaces are usually really efficient for the caregivers. So the people who have to clean and feed and medicate and okay. manage. The cats. That makes sense. But zero consideration for the most part has been given to the image to the public or the comfort of the visitors coming to potentially adopt the cats and spend time with them. Um, so I, there's just a lot of room for improvement to bring all of those things together. So uh, the research shows a lot of how you deal with cats in a shelter situation, um, especially the Fear Free uh, Shelters program also has a ton of fantastic information about how shelter cats are under so much stress and the, just the whole goal is to reduce the stress. So what environmental enrichment pieces do you need in a shelter environment? Yeah. You need climbing, you need hiding spaces, you need ad adequate resources, um, and you need, if you're in a group housing environment, they need places to get away from each other, to get away from visitors coming in, or to choose to come and interact with other cats, with people coming in. So it's a lot about choice and control and, and managing stress for cats in a shelter situation. So I come in and I say, well, let's do it <laughs> in a beautiful way. So yes. that when people are in here posting selfies on um, social media, your logo's in the background and the place looks amazing and the cats all look happy. And, and that's paint. That's not, that's not expensive. 
right. It's just, again, just like what I said with the residential catification, it's just thinking a little bit more creatively and you don't have to spend a fortune. You just have to plan it out. And I think about that because about a decade ago, there's a photographer whose name, of course, I can't remember, that was taking photos of dogs at shelters in very great settings, positive, not just the dog looking or on a leash or something. And then some of them like to go and swim and, and, and it just opened up the adoptions. And I think what you're saying here with cats, people, you want them to want to go to a shelter and not call it the pound, right? Right. Yes, you want to create an inviting, beautiful space. And also one of the things we talk about is incorporating retail design principles oh. into uh, your shelter housing that is public facing. So a place where potential adopters are going to come. Um, a cat lighting. cafe. Yes, cat cafes are very good at doing this. So I, uh, and there's a lot of crossover between shelters and cat cafes these days, but we encourage the shelters who maybe aren't working with a cat cafe to look to what they're doing. They're incorporating these retail design principles. So beautiful sort of displays, the cats yeah. with the merchandise, well lit, um, you know, places for people to sit, all of these things, uh, you know, no excessive noises or smells, things like that, really creating a beautiful environment that is inviting and welcoming. And it doesn't give you that sort of sad feeling of going to the pound. I know um, Peggy Adams Rescue League is in West Palm Beach and they added a cafe for in the cat area so people could sip tea and check out cats and and it, it's it's boosting the adoptions. So I like how you said it's the retail too. So maybe a person wants to buy a cool cat shirt from supporting a shelter, right? Yes, exactly. So all of those things, and that's another income resource. And a lot of shelters are starting to incorporate these things. Um, there's really been a huge shift there. And, and of course, it started in the dog area first, but now <laughs> it's starting to show up in the cat area. And, and it has so much impact. The design of the shelter environment for both dogs and cats has so much impact on the animal's well-being while they're there and the speed at which they're going to be adopted. Amen, sister. We're talking with Kate Benjamin of House Panther. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, she's going to tell us what's on the horizon for her in 2023. What about catios? And you have this thing on your site. I love it. It's called Cat Gear, and we're going to plunge into that, if you don't mind, as well. So everybody, sit, purr. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Four-Legged Life Show. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I am so gr grateful that we have Kate Benjamin in the house, and she's talking all things cool to bring out the best in your cats. I have, in, in our backyard, we did a project. We did a 15 by 30 patio. Oh, that's and huge. Over a roof. And uh, roof. And then a, a, half of it is screened in with a door. The other is kind of open air where the fire pit can be and all that. But we don't call it a, a patio because we love our dogs and our cats. We have a, a cat tree in there and some other things. And the dog has, the, they have an orthopedic bed. So we call it a patio because it's got dogs and cats. But for the folks, why is it so important to give indoor cats opportunity to have some sort of catio? And what is a catio? So a catio is a completely enclosed outdoor space where a cat can come and go and be safe. So they can't get out and no predators can get in. But they um, use their nose. They can smell, right? And see exactly. And That's the hear. important part. They can be outside where there's fresh air and sunshine. Maybe you've got some plants growing out there, a water feature, you know, a cat tree, places to rest. It just gives them the ability to go outside. Of course, I wish all of my cats could be indoor, outdoor. It's absolutely not practical. Where I live, I think in most places, they are such valued family members. I can't stand the thought of them going outside where there are predators and threats. Yeah. So we have a huge catio. Well, I was of, hoping you were going to tell us about yours. Yes. Yeah. So you can kind of, kind of see it out the door. There's a fan out there. Um, it actually spans the whole back of the condo and they can come and go from the living room or the bedroom through cat doors that we've put into the sliding glass doors. Nice. And it's fully equipped with shelves and climbing things. There's all, most of the litter boxes are out there um, and they like to <laughs> we have a, a neighbor just on the other side of the wall. So they like to go up to the top of this um, climber that I put there and they, we call it hay dogging. Um, <laughs> 
He does. Okay, so they, they hate dog. Uh, and he's is the right dog there. looking back? Is the dog cool? He's he's learned that they will get up there and look at him. So yeah, they're ninjas. You know, dude, yeah. just be friends with cats. <laughs> there they are looking at me. I'm sure they're looking right into our neighbor's house, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They won't say anything. They're pretty cool, right? Yeah, well, we don't say anything about their dog barking all the time, so they don't say anything about the cats <laughs> looking at them. There's also a giant cat wheel out there, like, you know, a giant hamster oh, wheel. Oh, exercise? Yes. So, oh. uh, Jeremiah Bean Dip, who's sleeping back here. Say his name again. You said it so fast. Jeremiah Bean Dip. <laughs> and this is his brother over here is Horatio Queso. And their third <laughs> I'm getting brother, the theme. <laughs> their third brother is Pico de Gato. Oh, somebody <laughs> likes uh, Mexican food. Gotcha. So okay. <laughs> Um, well, he's the one that will go out and run on the wheel. Unfortunately, it's very loud. It sounds like a freight train coming and, uh, he d likes to do it at 3 a.m. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I live in Dallas. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. <laughs> but, you're, you know, so we have the catio. Now, on your site, too, of House Panther, you, you talk about, um, the cat gear. And I, I kind of want to plunge into it because our cat, a gear guide. You talk about play, climb, scratch, dine, rest, litter, travel. Yes. One, yes. two, so, three, four, five, six, seven. The whole seven holy grails of a contented and rich cat, right? So important to hit all these things. Because there's nothing that frustrates me more than when somebody says, Oh, I'm getting a cat because they don't need anything. It's oh. just a cat. They, <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, they take care of themselves. No. Well, they will survive but right. they won't thrive. So these are the things that you need to provide for your cat in their environment to really help them live their best lives and be cats. So playing takes the place of hunting. That's what they would do outside, right? So you need all sorts of toys from wand toys, interactive toys, little things they can chase across the floor, things they can grab and bunny kick. So I'm always just looking for toys that mimic prey, but look nice on your living room floor. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's good. All right, we got play, through. check, yeah. climb. Play. Um, climbing, as we talked about before, so important. Needs to get them up off the ground so they can see their entire environment, see what's going on, get away from things they want to get away from. Uh, what's the next one? Here Scratch. Scratching. So scratching is important for marking territory um, because they're not they're not only leaving their claw marks, but they have scent glands between their toes. And so they're leaving their scent on whatever they're scratching on. And if you don't want them to scratch on your new sofa, you need to give them something else. And scratching is so specific to individual cats. Um, there are different materials. So cardboard, sizal, carpet, um, all these different things, wood. And then there are different vertical, horizontal, incline, wall mounted. So you wow. have to find a combination of scratchers that your cat likes. You may need to experiment a little bit. Okay, we're moving on the channel. Uh, my favorite topic, dine. Dine. So food and water. So this um, are so important, in a, especially in a multi-cat household, they need to feel like there are enough resources. So um, water is you don't ever want to put water near the food because out in nature, if water is near a food source, it could be contaminated and oh. dangerous. So cats will prefer a water source that is away from the food. So and I like, not near the litter box, please. And not near the litter box. Exactly. <laughs> so I like to place fountains and dishes around the house for water. And then if you have multiple cats, they all need to feel like they can get the food they want. And so there's just ways of thinking about where are you feeding the cats? How are you feeding them? What dish is it in? They don't like whisker stress, which is when their whiskers oh, are yeah. side of the bowl. So you want something that's wide and shallow. Good. Um, so there's just lots of different things to think about, but it, it's, it's, it is more than just throwing out a bowl of dry food, you yes. know, don't right. just use your cereal bowl. There's actually more things to think about. Like if you're, if your cat is having issues, you may need to look further into this. Yes. And check with your veterinarian. It's two good uh, nutrition sites, uh, balanceit.com and petdiets.com, run awesome. by veterinary nutritionists. So they're the they're the, the go-to folks. All right, going through rest. So resting, that is a, another really important resource. Cats see the prime resting spaces as, um, as important things. So in a multi-cat household, they might compete 
or the best place, right? The place in front of the window. So you want to have multiple options. So uh, they need a place where they can feel warm and comfortable. Um, and so hiding, hiding and resting kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Um, and Jackson doesn't like to use the word hiding, which we usually say more like cocooning. Or, <laughs> you know, like, I know, so, but yeah, sometimes they just want to get away from the noise and exactly. everything. Right. And, and, and a semi-enclosed space will give them more warmth and privacy and will make them feel better. But you don't want them hiding under the bed or in the back of the closet. You want to give them something that is a nice option for everybody. All right. We got two more. Litter and then travel. Litter is the giant elephant in the room for everyone who lives with a cat. Right. So it's a necessary evil. You're and it's very nice. Hey, cats pee and poop, I heard. Yep. yep. Right. And <laughs> it's very nice of them to do it in a box when we ask them to because we love them and we keep them inside. So it's kind of a big nightmare. But um <laughs> there are so many pieces to consider. The type of the box, the size of the box, the litter you're using, how all of your tools are organized, your, you know, the the scoop, the clean litter, the bucket, the bags, all of the things that you need to regularly clean a litter box because if you just stash that litter box down in the basement where you never see it, you're never going to scoop it and that will create huge problems and behavior problems for your cat. So the litter system or ecosystem That's a good, yes, yes. has to work for everybody, right? It has to right. be, the location has to be private, but still accessible. The box has to be the right design. The litter has to work for everybody. I can talk about actual litter for days. <laughs> okay. Well, we only have about a minute and a half left. So <laughs> final one, travel, because my cat has been, pet safety cat Casey has traveled by car and plane to 13 states when we teach uh, pet first aid and pet behavior. And he's awesome. He loves his carrier. He is great on an airplane, but I did everything I could to set it up, him up for success. That's amazing. And you are probably far more of an expert on cat travel gear than I am because I don't generally take my cats out. But it is a huge trend now with travel oh, yeah. cat. Um, being Adventure here. kitties and Adventure kitty cat cats. go. Yeah. Exactly. So there, um, and, and if you start them young, like you said, set them up for success and use quality gear and behavior training and you're just being responsible about it with harnesses and leashes and good quality carriers, then you're going to have a way better time taking them to the vet when it's time to go. If yes. God forbid ever an emergency. I mean, those are really important things. And I think a lot of the younger generation is paying attention to that. Oh, I think they are, too. So what's something big coming up on the horizon for you, Kate Benjamin? Oh, uh, the holidays. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always trying to come up with new and exciting products and things. Um, I am going to revamp my uh, Feline So Fine website and then just working on some really cool shelter projects, one with the Barn House here in Arizona, nice. um, which is a partnership with Armor Cat. So I'm just kind of keeping all the balls in the air and doing all the things. I just that wish I HGTV would put you on. I'm, I'm, oh. I love the old farmhouses being renovated and all these other things. It's time to have Kate Benjamin on HGTV with Cat Reno. Here, I just declared it. Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Last message. What? How have cats made you a better person? Oh my gosh. The, um, I think just the, the empathy that you get for all life, you know, like really it, it, we hear a lot of people talk about this in the, you know, and it's certainly in the vegan movement and the animal movement. Um, but it's true. I mean, it, it really is when you understand those creatures and their soul and their individuality and how much you love them, it, it, it just helps you be more compassionate towards everybody, towards people, all animals, the environment. Um, you know, I think having animals in your life is just such an important thing to learn compassion. I, I, um, I agree. I am a better human because of my furry Brady Bunch. Hey, everybody. Um, that's it for our show today. I really want to give pause up to our very, very special guest, Kate Benjamin of House Panther. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and all the stations coast to coast that are airing our show. Uh, you can subscribe. It's easy. Just go to fourleggedlife.com for details. And my friends at Tevra uh, Brands, they're going to help you stretch your purchasing power. Just go to Tevra, T-E-V-R-A dot com. Put in Arden 20, Arden 20 at checkout and save 20% on whatever you get. Um, that's pretty cool. Everybody wants to save money. So until next time, this is Arden Moore 
saying to all you two, three, and four leggers out there, pause up. Pause up, pet pals. Thanks for watching. If you liked my video, please hit the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel. I want to keep providing you with great guests, special first aid tips, and yes, more videos of these guys. See you next time. Pause up.